Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I am very excited. I want to start a new project on X5. As you know, something's been bothering me with this X5. If you follow my channel, if you follow my other videos, you might have seen me complain a little bit about the rear brake caliper, just how tiny and puny this thing is. It, I find it very like, for a performance vehicle, and I notice this is something that's common with a lot of performance vehicles, but why, why, why would they do this? Um, so luckily, um, I was contacted by a subscriber. He actually makes these brakes um, that are compatible for the X5. I believe they are a Porsche Panamera rear brake caliper, but he does all the work as far as stripping out the existing paint, getting them coated, get the M logos on. So. Anyway, we talked and um, ended up purchasing a pair. So I'm gonna get those installed. Um, I'm just happy to have something to match the rear and I think it just really will complement the M. <sighs> These annoying little Nissans. <laughs> I think it'll, it'll complement the M on the, uh, for the X5 and I think for any M, to be honest with you. I mean, even the Type R, it's got a nice Brembo up front but then you go back to the rear caliper and it's just small. I'm not sure why it's the thing. I mean, even the new M3 is going out and I even thought like the M3 that I have now with, with the single piston or sorry, two piston in the rear was fairly small, but I didn't see the weight savings or whatever it is. I feel like the rear brakes don't need to do as much what I totally get, but I think for just aesthetics alone, it just looks a lot better. You see what I mean? I mean look, at, look at how big this front brake caliper is. I mean, it's six pistons and you can't even see the whole thing. All right, everyone, before we begin, I just want to mention, and this is just something that I just want to mention, please attempt these stuff, these projects at your own risk, okay? This is a little bit more involved than your normal changing the tire you are having to disconnect a brake line to swap out a caliper. All right, so with that being said, please don't exceed your skill level. If you get into a bind or if you feel like this is too much, please consult a professional. All right, so let's see what we got here. First thing I have, I got my brake fluid. Um, obviously need something to clean the brakes. Um, this rotor home tool is, I would say is uh, vital, I guess, to prep and clean the surface for new uh, pads. So I'm gonna go over this, I'm gonna remove the rotor and I'm going to um, cut what it does is it scores it and puts some more of a crosshatch pattern, sort of like what you see for a brand new rotor. Um, he sent me new, I got new brake lines. These are like this, the, from ECS tuning it looks like. And also the M logos for the front, which I'm gonna redo. Also, I'm gonna put new M logos on the front. Um, Turkey baster to, I'm gonna suck out the old fluid. This is for bleeding. Anytime you change out a rear, or I'll say, not say rear, anytime you change out a brake caliper or you open up that system, it is vital to bleed the brakes. Um, flush out, you know, get all the air out, make sure there's no air line, because obviously if you can't compress air, you step on the brake pedals and go down to the floor. Uh, these bottles are just gonna help me aid the process. And this is a speed bleeder to help put pressure on the brake system so I don't need a second person to help pump the brakes for me. Um, obviously my tools and here it is. Here's the new caliper. I'm gonna keep it wrapped up for now. I don't wanna take the chance of opening it up because knowing me, I'm clumsy. I probably end up just dropping it, scratching it before I get it installed. And you know, I'm gonna be upset and you know, I'm be sitting here disappointed. And then, um, yeah, you guys don't see a grown man cry or anything. So uh, I'm gonna leave this just wrapped up right now for and until I get it ready to install. Um, I think one of the things I was told and is vital when I'm doing this, be very, 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 very careful not to get any brake fluid on the paint because it will obviously um, take the paint off. And that goes for anything, even on the automotive paint, even on the paint on here on the car itself. If I'm doing anything with the brake fluid, if I spill anything, uh, I need to get that off. So um, actually I'm gonna get some, a spray bottle because you know, suggested to also get some water or something to wipe up quickly if I do uh, contaminate it.
All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the bracket and the rotor is one thing, one piece and let it hang. So I'm gonna pop out, the, it's got these two bolts back here. I'm gonna see if you guys can see them. There are these two broke, these two. Right there's one there and there's one below it. See there's two. So I'm gonna take these off and this will let the cap, caliper and bracket just come off as one unit. All right, I'm gonna use this um, star tool I bought from Lowe's and I'm using the 916 that seems to fit the closest. I uh, really need a like, e Torx, but this thing is universal anyway, so it should work. All right, have a little breaker bar. So I wanted to just go ahead and give it a little pressure. Also, when getting off this last bolt, I could put a little upward pressure on it to, as I unscrew it because I'm doing it by hand. I know everybody says I should wear gloves. I need to, I need to invest in some gloves. All right, now that that's off, I can whip this out here. Okay. Let that just hang there for now. I'm gonna be replacing the brake line as well. So all this is gonna be replaced. All right, so now I'm gonna remove the rotor. You don't have to do this. You can just go right on and skip the steps and go to the caliper, but I wanna provide a, a nice clean surface, remove all this deposits from this pad and get ready for the new one. These little bolts and this is I'm using a it looks like a uh, six it's like a little hex putting this on a breaker bar it really doesn't it's not tight at all it's just more of a set screw but it just helps a little bit just get that broken off a little bit just that's all you need and you can use this to go from there. If you know you're going to do this in advance, I would recommend maybe just getting a, one or two extra. I already have a couple of extra ones but it's good to have some extra, just in case you strip these and have to drill it out. Boy, it's beating this thing. I'm gonna hit this thing for a little bit. I think you guys really need a, I need a bigger hammer, uh, like a six pound, but I've been hitting this thing pretty good. Oh, it's starting to come off now. Okay. All right. Okay, you do not need to put the X5 into service mode to remove the brake rotor. Uh. 
All right, so I'm gonna do is, I've got this rotor home tool, and it says uh, low speeds, max, you know, blah, 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 don't go over a certain, so I'm gonna do low RPM. Um, so right now I got it in high, I'm just gonna go over that one, number one. I don't even know if that's even fast enough. I'll start off one and I'll go from there. It's kind of blow out the holes. All right, so Tony also told me not to get this uh, stuff on a new, basically on caliper paint, on a new caliper. So I'll make sure I avoid that, clean it. when you get this lined up you get it all the, the set screws lined up with the correct locations right there All right, and these screws just needs to be tight, not like hand tight, not super tight, just more just holding the rotor in place. So the uh, new rotors come with new brackets, new pads as well. Oh, this is a really nice package that they have in here. I'm going to show this real quick. See, we got the pre-grease on here. The pads are set. Um, he really did a nice job on this, on bundling this caliper together. Let's take, let's take a second look at this. Hex 10 for this. So I'm using a hex 10. I'm just going to remove the factory bolts, factory bracket here. Now I'm gonna take the bracket that I pulled off the existing FRC, the new caliper. So your factory bolts um, that we used to take off the rear caliper are going to be used to apply to the new bracket. So let's do that now. And also I'm gonna take my 
bolt and I'm just gonna dab a little bit of the Loctite on here. A thread locker. Let's get a test here. Okay. do a test fit. Oh yeah. Like that. All right, and your torque specs are going to be 110 uh, Newton meters. or I think it's 81 pound-feet of torque. Okay. Next thing is installed a new brake line into the caliper. Next thing is installed a new brake line into the caliper. Again, 916 to open and wrench. And I'm just gonna tighten this a little bit. It is aluminum, so be careful. All right, just a little bit right there. I'm not going too tight, I'm just a little bit more than finger tight. All right, then I'm gonna slide this on. Be careful. use my bolts to get it all right. Kind of start by hand, kind of wiggle to make sure it catches the threads okay before you start to apply um, your torque to it. All right, torque specs for these bolts. Um, I believe it's 63. Which seems, I already went from 63 to 104. So I'm gonna do 63 to see how that feels first before I go any more. Yeah, I think 63 feels fine for this. I think 104 would be too much. All right, so now we'll take my hose, route it back here behind the suspension, get it ready.
So I was following the same path. It's going to get routed up this way. And it's going to connect right there. So what I did was I removed the brake line. I got some vice grips, put it right in there and slid this out. This is the clip that holds the, the new one. So that's all set. Now, should be able to slide the caliper, the existing hose out of here. All right. All right, so you see where this rubber line reaches this hard line right there. This is the factory hose, this is the color. Now I'm gonna connect the new one here. So I'm gonna unscrew and swap this out without losing too much fluid. Here we go. Okay, break fluid is coming out. ready with this new one to try to switch this out in here like this so here we go take a watch off up Okay, snug it up the same way. All right. So that was, that was not very smart of me to do that. Um, I ended up having a burn on my skin from that brake fluid. Um, and like I said, it's not the smartest thing, especially for me working in medical, I should know better. Uh, so anyway, got the brake fluid line all switched out. Got gloves on this time. Uh, I highly advise you guys wear gloves. That was not a fun thing. My hands started, I washed them, my hands started burning and everything else. Brake fluid, any hydraulic fluid, really corrosive, and I should have been more caution than that. So I'm gonna take out this old line here. There's the old caliper. Route this P 
piece in here. And I should be able to put a new clip in. Replace my clip on this side. All right. Let's clean this off. All right, so what you want to do now is clip, reclip that in. Um, I gave mine just a little bit of more of a, uh, I had to reach back out, but yeah, slightly different. And I got my clamp right there. So I want to reinstall actually my wheel. I'm gonna go to the right rear, install that brake caliper, bleed, and then we'll work way back over to this end. All right, so after you get the new caliper mounted up, uh, it's a good idea to now take off the, the old, well, actually you should have done this before, the uh, brake sensor. And the sensor, again, if you don't know, the sensor basically wears out once the pad reaches a certain level. Once that sensor breaks, it triggers a light inside the car to tell you that it's time to replace your brake pads as opposed to having the little tab that makes a screeching noise. So I'm gonna take the old one, I'm gonna put it right in here. Um, there's a slot in this pad, and then there's also a little tab in here to, if you, know, if you see it, there's also a tab in here where you can route the cable. So I'm gonna set this right in here. Put that right inside there. All right, so when you're doing this, the upper lip is gonna be on the top part. And then just slide that through. And then I can put my bracket in here like this. My clip. Okay, so my camera died. Now I'm gonna do um, break through a flush. Apologize, now I'm on a different camera. Hopefully the audio didn't change very much. So what I'm gonna do is, now we're here, and first thing I'm gonna do is just suck out the old fluid. Now you'll notice here, you'll see two lines coming off the master cylinder. So that just means if there's a brake line for the front, brake line for the rear, as opposed to one. So really, I'm only gonna do just the rear brakes right now. Um, if you wanna be, you know, if you feel like you need a brake fluid flush, it's your time then go ahead and flush your brake system by doing all four wheels. But for now, I'm just gonna do the rear. So it's always important to start the furthest away from the master cylinder. So the master cylinder's here. The furthest wheel that's away from it will obviously be my right rear, and the next one will be the left rear. And if I were going to do all four, I'll come up here to the right front, and then finally left front. Now before you drive away, it's a good idea to pump the brakes. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn the car on and I'm gonna give the brakes a few pumps. Pedal's getting firmer. Also, now that the system is pressurized, 
it's a good idea to give it a once over, look for any leaks. Check both sides, make sure it's not leaking. All right, so let's get started as far as um, we're going to do our uh, braking on the brakes. As you want to bring your brakes gradually up the temperature. And it's similar to grilling, right? Because you don't want to grill um, on like, you know, we, we, on non-stick. You want to apply film or something on the grill grate itself, right? Like a, a spray of some type or oil. And a similar effect because when you break in, you, you're depositing a film of the brake pad material on the surface of the rotor. Okay. So if you don't, say for example, if you're grilling a bone and skinless uh, chicken breast on the grill, no nonstick at all on the, on the grill grate, you, after a few minutes, you go to flip that grill, that, that chicken. A piece of that chicken has probably came off and is stuck to that grill grate. All right, that same effect happens. When you go to, when you're stopped at a stoplight, if you don't break in your brake pads, for example, you get that juddering effect. That juddering effect isn't the rotor itself being warped, for example, it's not like doing this. The rotor isn't not doing that. But what's happening is there's a high spot on that rotor that every time you brake, the car grabs, it grabs, it grabs. And as the different rotations now are happening, now you're feeling this effect on the wheel and or the vibration. And then if it's on the rear, it's gonna be the back. You're gonna feel it in the seat. If it's the front, you're gonna feel it in the, in the steering wheel. Um, but that usually comes from, you know, said the brakes are getting too hot. And especially when you're sitting still at a stoplight and then you go to roll forward after being there for a few minutes, you have deposited a, some pad material onto that rotor surface that's stuck there, that one high spot, right? Like I said, like similar to the, the chicken on the grill. So what we're doing is we're adding, think of it like a nonstick layer on the rotor. All right, so let's get started. What I'm gonna do is I'm gradually bringing the pads up a temperature. And I'm going to do a few stops around uh, 10, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, 30 miles per hour. Um, just kind of slowly bring them up temperature and then I'm gonna go up to 60 miles, miles per hour. And I'm not gonna come click to a stop because like I said, you don't wanna stop completely. You don't want any ABS intervention because that's going to cause that wheel to stop momentarily. All right, you, you wanna keep it rolling. So let me get to a place where I'm not sitting still. Again. Gradual, moderate stops here to 10 miles per hour. Okay, here we go, back on the gas again. smell some things you may even see some smoke that's normal okay. there we go nice smooth application I 
everything. Well, that seems like a lot. You know, and, you know, like I said, the brakes, I can feel the brake pedal getting soft. I can feel it going closer to the floor. And even the front brakes are getting hot. We got to think this is a heavy vehicle. And I've done repeated, 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 um, very, very monitory hard uh, stops here. It's normal to feel that way. Like I said, it's a heavy vehicle. And like I said, that's why I advantage of doing. See, now they think they're grabbing again really well. To be honest with you. grinding at first I was like oh boy what's that noise but no it was a uh, plane above all right now if you have if you have to come to a reason like a stoplight say for example there's a stoplight you have to stop after or you have to do something like this try to avoid sitting still so if I know that oh there's a traffic light and I'm in the middle breaking my brakes I will stop pretty far back I'll leave myself a good one or two car lengths like for example say like I gotta stop here and there's one car ahead I would just sit here and roll slowly up to them to hopefully wait and what you're doing is you don't want to stop you're just letting the brakes roll until the light turns green you know and go slower if you can but you don't want to stop if you have to stop if you have to stop do not rest your foot in the brake go to neutral and just wait there like i said there's traffic coming so I, i'm just neutral right now 